Okay, let's get started on the next session. I've got Jamie Sanchez uh, with de-revolutionizing OS fingerprinting, the cat and mouse game. Jamie's got over 20 years experience as a specialist advisor for large national and international companies, focusing on different aspects of security. Um, without further ado, I'll hand over to Jamie. Thanks very much. Well, hi, hello. It's great to be here. Thank you for coming to see this talk. Uh, just some things about me. Um, I've been working in security for almost 20 years. It's not my first time in Vegas. Uh, so it's great to be here again. Um, what we are going to talk about is always fingerprinting. You know, that is something very interesting from different perspectives, you know, from the attacker point of view, for the defenders, administrators, vendors, you know. Uh, you really need to know what kind of operating system you are trying to, to connect. If you try to attack, you, you need to know, for example, if it's a Windows XP without a service pack or, or whatever before launching uh, your exploit. You, you have to know the memory addresses. So. It's described as passive collection of configuration attributes from remote devices, but it's not also this because there are a lot of approaches for operating system fingerprinting. You know the old days when everything was like banner grabbing, that's manual reconnaissance. Then we moved to active uh, operating system fingerprinting with tools like Xproof, like Nmap. Then we have also the that passive point of view where you are only analyzer like a uh, packet sniffer all the traffic that you are um, generating on the on the on your side and on the other side just to get a uh, useful information but there is another approach that are the timing attacks we are not gonna see it here so the first technique is banner grabbing is very simple you connect you use telnet for example to a web server to get all the headers information if you are dealing with uh, an ESS or, or NGINX, whatever. You can also connect to FTP services, Telnet to see the banner. You can use SNMP. That's kind of active uh, techniques. But you can also get free information for other services, you know, IMAP, Finger, NNTP. And if you have access to the remote machines, you can also play with some configuration files for the issue files, the, the banners, and uh, you can try to port scan, and also you can try to do social engineering just to get information about the technologies used by any company. There are a lot of services that gave any other information. For, for example, FTP used the CST command that has information about the server operating systems, and you have some uh, some examples there. Another useful thing would be, for example, in FTP connecting to the to the FTP, get get any file that is inside, for example, the LS, compress, cat, and try to get information on your local machine. For example, here you can see that our files comp uh, compiled for Linux, for Sun, wherever. You can also use. Uh, all the kind of uh, search engines like Sodan, like Census, that get all this information for you. So don't have, you don't have to interact with the with the other machine. For example, this is very useful because I don't know if you can see it there. Well, don't worry. If you try to scan, for example, mobile networks, you can try to look for a uh, Ports 62078 is well uh, for jailbroken iPhones, and you can try to connect with SSH with default credentials that are root and alpine, and try to move on. So this is very important uh, to know to know what kind of operating system you are dealing with. In this case, I only use that mobile phones to jump to another machine and finally attack the, the my target. Try to get all the information, and uh, and I try finally uh, attack my my final target. So, some things you need to know, TCP IP theory. This should be very basic, but it's something that people have to understand. 
before going into into uh, fingerprinting. For example, in IP, you you have to know what kind of protocol you are dealing with: TCP, UDP, ICMP. That's are the most important ones that we are uh, uh, taking a look. Source address, destination address, something you know. But in TCP, we will be dealing with uh, SIM packets, ACK packets, push. We have to know not every, almost every uh, TCP option that is available, but you have to understand that every almost operating system use some uh, TCP options in the same order, and maybe in Windows XP and Windows 2000, they have the same options, but they are in different order. So that's the way that we can uh, make the difference and know what we are dealing with a Windows XP or Windows 2000. The same for uh, UDP. Just to know source port, destination port, you will see that in Nmap uh, it has like a custom uh, um, data that has a lot of C's. And finally, uh, ICMP that is used by Xproof by Nmap. So these are some basics that you will see that in any database you get all this information if there is a congestion flag uh, that is on. Um, if the default fragment flag is on. So for active operating system fingerprinting, we are gonna see just uh, little tools that, for example, the, some of the first one that was called Queso, that is in, in Spanish is Que Sistema Operativo. It's like which operating system. And uh, it, will, uh, it was sending like seven kind of tests. You can see the scene, scene plus uh, acknowledge, fin, and then they moved and, and another project was released that called Xproof. Xproof did a lot of, uh, deal with a lot of packets uh, of ICMP, sent also UDP packets, but these kind of tools are some old right now and I think that almost everyone uh, in the hacking scene security is using Nmap. Nmap is a, is a must for pen tester for everyone, and Nmap gives you a lot of information about what kind of device you are you are dealing with. For example, the device type in this case is a general purpose because it's a computer, but it can also tell you if you are dealing with a printer, if you are dealing uh, with a firewall, with a router, or if it doesn't know well, it can give you information about this. Maybe should be a router, or maybe it's a firewall. Next thing that we'll tell you is the family. In this case, is Linux. And the generation. The generation is practically the, the version that, that you are running. Common platform enumeration, that's something standard. The details on the fingerprint. If it's not a perfect match, because there are some times where you, you have like a firewall or you are not getting all the traffic, you can uh, get a message like just guessing. So Nmap doesn't know exactly what kind of operating system is, but maybe it's telling you that you are dealing with a Solaris. Maybe this version, maybe another one. You know, a lot of information, the network instance, like if you were uh, doing a trace route, uptime guess, TCP sequence prediction. But you can also use um, version scan. Version scan is uh, very useful when you are dealing with a proxy because if you try to make the operating system fingerprinting you are dealing really with the proxy and you need to get information about the remote host so in this case it can get a lot of information about if uh, it's an SSL service uh, it is running TCP in UDP it can deal with uh, IMAP whatever service but the interesting thing here is how does NMAP works how does it really work? The new working for this is that Nmap is leaving 15 TCP proofs to UDP and ICMP. All these tests are with a custom uh, destination port. They have custom flags. And the result for the Nmap database is something like that. I don't know if you can see it very fine, but you know you can find it in the slides that you have a lot of information about every operating system that you are dealing with. For example, the six first uh, TCP proofs. So it has like this custom uh, TCP options. If you want to get more information about this, it's really useful to get the, the official Nmap book. It has a lot of information about this. So you can get 
uh, all the TCP options that uh, they are using, the port, the remote port they are using, if they are looking for a, a network congestion flag, if the default fragment uh, bit is set on ICMP, and then begins with the real proofs that are T1, T2 to T7, when you have a lot of uh, um, a lot of flags that you will know that you will receive. For example, packet T, uh, T2 is no flags, fragment bit is on, its window size is 124. This is all the information I, I got, so I can know which packets I should filter and I should uh, manipulate and let all the traffic uh, go to the other traffic go to, to to my machine. So I, in this case, we will see a, a tool that is called OS Filler that is only dealing with a specific packets for a map. All the other traffic should be should be treated by the by, by the kernel. This case is UDP. UDP has a um, an special payload because it has like 300 times the letter C, so it's very easy to to recognize that kind of of packets. Um, I have a small demo, but I, I think it will be better if we do it live because we can make the, the screen bigger. So the same thing is for basic operating system fingerprinting. You know, it's like dealing with a packet sniffer. What you are trying to do is copy in the, the data without modifying it. You don't manipulate the traffic. You just get all the information and try to analyze it locally to get all the information you can about the remote host. And for this, you got POP, for example. Um, OS Filler, that's the tool uh, I'm presenting, uh, can hold it, uh, all the information from the database from version 2. It's very simple. Every line is like this. The first is the window size for the, for the TCP uh, IP stack, time to leave, if the default uh, fragment flag is on, the TCP options and the order, and some quirks. For example, if you get a SIM packet, you shouldn't have any payload inside. But there are some operating systems that send this kind of information, so this is very useful to identify them. And finally, you got the like, like the label for the operating system. This is fully working, but then both moved to another version as version three, that is like a complete rewrite of the of the original code, and it deals with uh, TCP packets, the SIM packets, but uh, the the sync and the acknowledge packets, HTTP request. So it's more complete. In this case, instead of rebuilding all OS filler, what I'm trying to do is just to migrate this kind of uh, dead base to the old format so we can, we can use it. If, if you can see, it's almost the same kind of information. You have the time to leave, uh, the length of the packet, maximum segment size, you have the TCP options, default fragment, some more quirks that are uh, available in um, this operating system, so this is very easy to, to identify. And finally, there are a lot of people that are still using EtherCAP. EtherCAP is almost using the same technique as POF. It's only copying all the traffic and just try to analyze. And it has some uh, database. If you can see, all, practically all, the, all, the, all these tools use the same format all the same information, it analyzes TCP options, length of the packet, what kind of information, if it has a payload. So in this case, um, in the next release of OS Filler, I will migrate the same database from EtherCAP to both. It's very simple because uh, the version two of, of database, um, database of, of, of version two uh, is being parsed by OS Fuller and it is 100% complete, so it works like a charm. So I will be doing this, this change. But also, there are some commercial engines like Surefire or Fireside that use this kind of techniques to, to identify all the traffic for, for the IPS or the IDS. When you get an, an alert, they tell you like, hey, you have been attacked by this kind of machine. Maybe it's a Linux, maybe it's a Windows machine. And they are using almost the same information, and the same information, you can, you can spoof the, that kind of, of, of fingerprint. So you can try to confuse administrators, defenders. And this is really useful to know because uh, there are other online services, for example, for vendors of, for ads or whatever, that use this online. So it's very useful for, for vendors, for example, to know if you are using not only uh, Chrome or Safari, but if you are using uh, 
uh, Macintosh, you are using uh, Windows, you are using Solaris, whatever. So in this case, it's very simple to make the same thing. In in the in the first approach, it thinks it's uh, Linux version three, and in the second one, we are running only OS Fuller, and you get like Windows NT kernel. So that's because it's using same database like Pop or Tercap. So it's very simple to deal with this. So other techniques to to do this kind of fingerprinting could be analyzing the the DHCP requests. So when it when it asks, for example, for options like the DNS, DNS server default gateway, it asking in an, an exact order. So you can try to do. There is a tool called Satori. There is a very interesting uh, white paper that you can download and take a look. And at last, you can use other techniques like identify the MAC addresses, for example, Apple or Sony, use some kind of patterns. So you can use that to get all the information about the, the machine you want. So at this point, we know how to do that kind of active fingerprinting, passive fingerprinting, but which kind of countermeasures do we have to protect from this? I have uh, collected some information about uh, just uh, some ones, for example, IP personality. It was very famous because um, depending on some parameters, it let you change sequence number, window size, IDs, uh, how it answered to TCP packets. But the problem is that uh, it changed a lot of, of of the behavior of the TCP IP stack for Linux. And it, this uh, was working for all releases of the kernel, so nowadays it's not very useful. Uh, the other one was the stealth patch uh, that was running from kernel 2.22 to 2.4. But this problem, did this, this tool have a problem that um, if you change some parameters when scanning, you can know that this, this, the, the remote machine is using this tool and you can identify because you know that stealth patch only works for some kernels, so it makes easier to understand. Many others, the, it was loop, black hole, fingerprint fucker, morph, there were a lot of tools. But nowadays, I, I didn't find any useful tool to, to avoid this. So when I was working, I worked for Telefonica. When I was working at the security operation center, I have to deal with a customer that it was scanning all his network every day, every day. And I, I didn't have uh, time enough, I didn't have alerts so fast to notice him that I know that he was scanning. So I tried to make some kind of cool thing that is was detecting the, the scannings uh, uh, with a program I made in Perl, um, but also try to fool him and show like, hey, you're scanning, but you have a PlayStation inside your network. You see you have a Sony Wallman Ericsson. Um, and that's how we came to OS Fuller. OS Fuller, if you know uh, packets are inside the kernel space, and you are uh, on uh, on user space, so you cannot interact with packets in real time. So uh, the solution was to use NFQ. NFQ is uh, an extension for IP tables that accepts some uh, some uh, uh, extensions and lets you put all the packets inside some queues. So you have two elements. You have a queue handler that deals with the, with the packets with the kernel. So it tells the kernel, yes, give me the packets. And <laughs> it moves to user space. In user space, you can receive those packets, manipulate them, and send them back. The only problem here is that you have a maximum queue length that is 1,424. So you have to manipulate all those packets very, very fast, because if you don't and the queue gets full, all the traffic will be, re will be rejected, and that's a big problem. So, if just to just take a look, for example, let me see if I can. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, now you have, I think that you can see the screen now. If you, for example, do an nmap scan for localhost, it will give no information why, because I don't have any open port, so let's start, for example, secure cell. So we have, I'm running a Kali. I have the Linux with kernel version 3, 3.7 to 3.10. So this is all the information that Nmap can give me. So we will be using our tool is OS Fueler. OS Fueler is working. So what can you do? First of all, just let you know that here we are only dealing with, in case of Nmap, only dealing with the specific test for Nmap. All the traffic, all other traffic should go directly to your computer and shouldn't be manipulated in any way. So, for example, if you just want to take a look at what kind of operating systems do you have? Minus N. We are interacting with the official Nmap database. So you can just update it and, and be working. So this is almost all the operating systems that are available right now. There are a lot of them just to let you know that it has like 5,500 signatures. So there are a lot of operating systems to emulate. So if you do the same thing, for example, with Cough. The same. In this case, you have to deal with uh, what kind of uh, operating system do you want, and then you go to the versions. In this case, in Map, you can uh, with those filler, you can go it uh, in both ways. You can specify I want to be like a Windows, and I need the version to be like a XP or 2000, or maybe you just specify the family, I need to be Windows, and every packet that you are sending will be in a loop, and you will be changing your ID inside Windows. For example, the first one will be XP, second one will be 98, the third one will be 2000, that kind of things randomly. There are not so much signatures for, for both. There are like 250, and there is a special flag that if you just want to search, for example, give me all the information that you have, not for Windows, but let's see if you can, something that is smaller. For PlayStation, Nmap has like one, two, three, four, five signatures available for PlayStation, and you have one available for POF. In this case, uh, there are two queues for, for the traffic. One will go to um, to both to passive fingerprinting, the other one will go only to Nmap. So when you are running OS Filler, you get those different uh, queues. And in this case, uh, uh, the program is running in multi-threading. So I have made some tests, no some stress test, but because uh, last day in the Lemo Labs, people asked me about the uh, about the performance. So when using in a uh, in a web server without uh, um, a lot of connection. You have to understand that you have 1,024 1, uh, packets per queue, but in case of Nmap, Nmap sends like 20 packets. So to get the, the, few, the queue full, you will have like, uh, you will need maybe like 200 attackers scanning at the same time and, and yourself running a, a Celeron or something like that. So if you just wanted to, let's search if we can do nmap grep, no. Let's search for Windows of nmap. Uh, for example, this one. Now I have the information, so let's emulate to be Microsoft, Microsoft Windows 2000. And you get this info, you are mutating to Nmap. You get the in the database, the signature. You can see that there are some proofs that we, should re, we shouldn't respond. For example, for UDP, for example, for, for ICMP. 
And if you open a new window, let's repeat the same test. You see, Nmap thinks that we are running Microsoft Windows 2000 or maybe XP, that's because the signatures are very similar and Nmap doesn't have all the information it needs to, to complete the, the, the profiling of my operating system. If you use the verbose option and you send, oh, no. And you launch the same scan, you will get information for every packet that you receive from Nmap. So for example, you remember I told you that UDP test in Nmap has a payload of 300 Cs? You can see it here. So this is not only useful <coughs> to uh, try to defeat Nmap, but you can also uh, let it run in the background and write directly all, the, all this information to alloc and try to, to get information when you are getting a scan. The same thing we can do with, for example, POF. We search Windows, for example, let's work with 2002. So, family is Windows, details are this and interface would be localhost. The same, you get here the signature for Windows 2000 and let's get in both. Just let me launch some localhost connections. If you see, I have started a secure cell connection and both things that we are running Microsoft Windows XP. If you stop always filler and do the same thing, in this case, it doesn't have information because it's a, a newer kernel and the, all that base of POF doesn't have it, but it's not the same signature. And you remember I told you that you could just specify the, the family. Just, I'm telling OS Fuller to try to emulate almost every version of Windows it has on every new packet. So, if you launch POF, Windows CE, Windows 98, Windows 2000, Windows NT, Windows 98, so on every connection, you will be changing inside the same family uh, uh, your, your fingerprint. You can, go to, you can go to random. In this case, it's a sound touch auto receiver. Linux 2.639 of just search for PlayStation. Now let's see if we can get some more, something cooler. Sony Ericsson Wallman mobile phone. Oh. And you see, same thing for this. So it's very easy for the um, it's very easy for the tool to get all this information, to read the Nmap database, to read POP databases. Nmap database is working like 95% because there are some signatures that doesn't have all the fields, and I have to change uh, the inner working of OS Fuller to to change that. But in case of POP is running uh, with almost every operating system. And I think that's all. Uh, you can get those filler 
uh, using GitHub or using Pip, and feel free to to collaborate on share any issues that you that you that you find. So if there is any any question, yes. I, I can hear you. No, no, no. In this case, we are only dealing with uh, active uh, um, fingerprint. No, there are there. Are, this is not valid proof. This is only a proof of concept for Nmap and for Pop. If you make some modifications in Nmap, for example, and you deal with uh, some small changes, you can get information about the remote host. So. This is a valid proof, but this only proof of, proof of concept for those specific tools. You can still use like DHCP, you can use the MAC address, you can use timing uh, attacks to identify the, the operating system. So this is not working for every technique, just should be working fine for, for these kind of tools. Yes? Excuse me? Does it the that That's what I, I told you before. I, I, I've not, I, have, uh, I haven't made any stress test, but uh, think of that in the case of passive, you are only modifying the, the, the SIM packets, and in the case of Nmap, you are only dealing with, with, uh, with almost 20 packets per, per scan. So that's not, that shouldn't be a, a problem. You should uh, maybe have a slow machine and have like 200 or 400 attackers scanning you at the same time to get the queue full. And the, the program works with multi-threading, so I, I, I haven't made a lot of uh, tests, but it should be working fine. I'm using like uh, on, on my pen test when I'm trying to, to do research and it's working fine. When with some servers I have on internet and it, it's working okay. But if you, if any of you can uh, get those, those, those information, that information about the performance, it should be great to have it uh, uh, inside the GitHub. Thank you very much. Thank you.